the most powerful Speed Force user in history, Wally West. What being do you know is so powerful he can fight the Justice League Dark when he has a team full of powerhouses like Zatanna, Dr. Fate, Constantine, and Etrigan, and you see him actually put in work against all these entities? I'm talking about Blitz and Zatanna so she can't say no words and have them harm themselves. Hurting Dr. Fate, even blitzing Edrigan, that's Wally for you. You know you're epic when God's Wrath himself, the Spectre himself, pretty much tells Wally that he's pleased with him. And they're talking about who? He pleased? Yeah, the actual one above high, the presence or God of DC Multiverse or something? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he stopped Eclipso shenanigans and all that good stuff. The Justice League Dark was possessed by Eclipso. Just face the fact that the Flash is faster than Superman in every way. They even said when it comes to raw speed, Superman and him used to be evenly matched. And even say he might have been a tad faster. But that's before he learned how to tap into the speed force and take complete control of his abilities. He's way faster than him. Wally West. High school student Wally West in his early days of course and he's also the nephew of iris west the girlfriend of barry allen coincidentally wally's favorite day came when iris arranged for him to meet his hero then as the flash told wally about the accident that gave him his powers the very same event befell wally oh wow the odds the same chemicals that affected barry apparently affected wally as well gained the ability of super speed he ended up becoming his protege kid flash they went on many adventures together had his own yellow and red suit Right here in this particular occasion, they said as Kid Flash, he can move twice the speed of sound. We know that's a lie. He can definitely move faster than that currently. In post-crisis, they explain it like I just, I literally just said. Caught in a bizarre accident, teenage Wally West was struck by a bolt of lightning like his mentor, bestowed with the gift of incredible super speed. Stuff happens later on after the death of his forerunner and years of training. As Kid Flash, Wally has inherited the identity of the Scarlet Speedster. Today, he carries on the legacy of the fast man alive. Today, Wally West is the Flash. You get the idea. This was such a bizarre coincidence for them both to get the powers the same way. They even said it's a freak billion to one coincidence. Another theory is that he draw down the speed force subconsciously to make a sad kid's wish come true to become a speedster. That one kind of makes a little bit more sense, I guess. People have this discussion all the time. Who's faster, Barry or Wally? And the answer is just simple. Wally's faster than Barry because they explain it in comics. Barry has more of a scientific connection. Wally has more of a spiritual connection with the speed force. They just kind of want him to be that fast. In this comic right here, they pretty much confirm that Barry's the master when it comes to science, but Wally's more connected on a spiritual level. One could say that Wally West has had his fair share of evolutions or forms. You obviously got his base form, but if he goes too far, he can become pure energy. One could say he got an energy form to where he legit becomes one with the speed force. And then he got the famous, say it with me, everybody, you know, they always have this in these videos, the famous temporary power where he becomes way mightier than all our favorite heroes and can blink them out of existence if he felt like it. But I'll go over this later. But even without this, he can still threaten the multiverse, which you're going to see a lot of in this video. DC has different tiers of power. You got the super soldier tiers like Batman that are humans that just work out real hard or train real hard to achieve their superhumanness or whatever. DC humans kind of remind me of Baki humans, how you can actually work out to get stronger, faster, superhuman levels just from training alone. But then you have people that are super soldiers like Deathstroke and stuff. But the funny part is, if beings like Batman are fast, can react to bullets and dodge them, and even other Bat family members like Cassandra Cain, Batgirl, that can literally stare at bullets mid-flight and move out of the way of them in time. If DC comic humans with enough training or whatever can actually dodge bullets with their fighting speed and they're not even considered speedsters. If a non-speedster in DC comics can do this, imagine how fast a speedster is. Like pretty much any speed force user or flash user could definitely do anything they can do but better when it comes to the aspect of raw speed. So anytime you see a flash level character react to bullets, just know that even super soldiers could do similar stuff. So of course you know a flash level character can do it. When you hear the name of the Flash, you probably think of a couple beings. You probably think of Barry Allen, or you probably think of Wally West. Most people wouldn't consider them the fastest, and DC kind of backs it up, as you're going to see in this video. But when it comes to speedsters, they're some of the rare characters that you can't really reboot them, or when you do, it doesn't really have any lasting effects when it comes to multiversal event ending changes and things of that such. It's simply because... When the universes get retconned or something, it doesn't necessarily mean the speedsters really get retconned because their power source for the most part is outside of the multiverse for the most part, which ends up being unchanged. Even if this stuff gets deleted, when they get rebooted into their new versions of themselves, they can still tap into the same power source technically. So does that power really get rebooted? You know what I mean? With that being said, it's no point in really distinguishing between the eras when it comes to a flash level being like Wally West. When it comes to even newer DC lists, when it comes to how fast he is at the top of the food chain, they even have him in the very front, even in newer comics. 
even faster than Barry Allen. So don't be surprised if I bring up Barry Allen in this vid a lot too to compare his feats because whatever Barry Allen can do, Wally West can do better when it comes to speed related stuff. Before we get into his raw speed feats right quick, let's get into some of the stuff he can do just purely based on the fact he's connected to an extra dimensional energy source that's bigger than the multiverse technically that surrounds the multiverse. First of all, he can use his speed in creative ways, like being able to use his speed to create cyclones. He's done this on several occasions, whether trying to save people or battling different entities. It's a common speech to like trope, especially since Wally's at the top of the food chain. We know he can definitely do a good job at creating his own cyclones. Thanks to being a Speed Force user, when they run at these ridiculous speeds, you're probably wondering why they don't burn up because they literally have an aura confirmed in the lore of DC Comics is the reason why things like this don't happen. They have like an aura because it's confirmed in places like this. They state his aura protects him from friction. And high velocity and he can share aura actually made a villain into an electromagnet mix it in his electricity and stuff with it there's occasions like this one could say he just has like an aura or extra durability because it, even though they're falling 60 miles per hour in this particular occasion nothing to break the fall he pulls her closer to have his aura protect them and this aura was actually successful because when they fell through this tree right here for example that would have been crucial but hey they was good afterward something that would normally be impossible is to talk at super speed because the speed of sound is only a certain speed so talking too fast it wouldn't benefit nobody but thanks to their speed auras he can hear each other when their auras intersect thanks to him being a speed force user he can literally latch on the trucks like it could be an extension of himself to grab stuff to help it pull it somewhere else speed force lightning thanks to his good connection with the speed force other speeds to level beings like savitar can't drain his speed or one could say steal it this is just straight up cheating there's no excuse for him to ever be naked because he can mold his suit straight out of the speed force itself and he can make everybody's uniform just from them thinking what uniform they have in their mind it's a little trick he learned with the speed force to help other speeds to suit up in this occasion he modified his suit to cover up his face completely when he was fighting a poison type character talking about being able to do stuff on the fly the reason why the suit itself is resistance because not only is it made from the speed force but it adapts rippling morphing adapting to the wind resistance and friction alien technology from the speed dimension the machine you can wear making his own suit wouldn't you love to be able to make your own outfit at wheel he can do full-blown energy blast like yeah yeah he can legit do energy projection and thanks to Dr. Fate, he gave Wally some Deadpool ability type stuff to be able to break the fourth wall to see the actual reader. And, and he said, no, I ain't got time to explain. There's implications of that. Wally West knows boxing because even beings like Impulse train here and there while under the tutelage of Wally West. Having fighting skills and being a speedster is just overkill. We got occasions like this where it's implied he has wrestling skills. Look, look at the, look at the holds in wrestling matches. Are you serious? In this particular occasion, the Flash doesn't have his powers. And you get to see him use like an actual melee weapon, something you don't see often. And you can see him use it. Honestly, like seeing Flash use melee weapons is kind of entertaining to see against these pesky demons while also talking about breaking the fourth wall and talking to the reader to make the reader help them. To make the page go literally go sideways because the reader helped them. Like, bro, what? This is some serious Deadpool stuff, but we're not going to get into that. No matter who you are as a character, speed is a very important aspect of any character, especially in fights. And the part that makes him scary is that he's Haxy. He can give speed and give stuff more momentum. Like the literal concept of speed itself, he can amplify or lend his speed to others. It goes so deep to where he can technically speed up chemical reactions to where if something's not reacting fast enough, he can make it react even faster. And if you want to go on a sprint with somebody and not be bored, lending speed to somebody you're cool with is epic. That's cool. The only limitation it seems when it comes to giving stuff momentum is that it cuts it to his own speed himself. So if he gives somebody half his speed, it'll make him half as fast, I guess. And objects that are at rest, he can't just give the momentum, won't be levitating pianos, he says. Like if something's completely still, he can't just make it float or something, make it levitate upwards or something. Then he would basically have telekinesis. Probably one of his most broken abilities that I don't understand why he just doesn't spam more. He can literally steal your speed like in this occasion with Cheetah, stole her speed by making lip contact. This is not the last time in this video I'll be bringing up speed steal though. Just wanted to let you know, this is one of his many hexy type of abilities. Due to his morals, he doesn't like to kill, but he found a way to put somebody in a frozen state, completely immobilizing him permanently, stole his speed. He was so charged, so connected to the speed force that he could do so much more than simply slow him down. Usually, you take somebody's speed to slow him down, not completely immobilize him. In this particular situation, he immobilized him permanently. He's still conscious, he still sees and hears and thinks in real time. 
but he's trapped for eternity in a frozen body, forced to stare with eyes that take a hundred years to blink. Another ability I'm gonna talk about more later in the video, but he can literally phase through stuff, kind of go intangible and when you walk through walls, like he phased through this maze, for example. When it comes to poisoning him, he can speed up his metabolism to burn out the drugs if needed. The only part is about speed healing is that sometimes he will heal the wrong way. And with the speed force, he can actually do some literal time manipulation by running through time. He can counter intangible beings by vibrating, by the way, just like Martian Manhunter. Because the speed force allows him to vibrate his abdomen back to solid form no matter how much you struggle. So yeah, Martian Manhunter, you still can get hit by Wally. <laughs> But how strong is this guy overall when it comes to speed and strength? I mean, I think the character from One Piece anime said it best when it comes to speed. That speed is weight. Have you ever been kicked at the speed of light? Yeah. It's literally stated that they can move thousands of times faster than the speed of sound. Can spin 10,000 cycles per second with raw speed. Speed turns sand to lava beneath his feet because of the friction. When you're so fast, flame doesn't have time to burn you. Can't touch him. Even when bullets are pretty much point blank range, he's fast enough to block them anyway. He's a being that has so much speeds he can outrun gravity, cross a river without sinking, race a spotlight to its target. He's the fastest man alive. Just starting off the video, we already know for a fact they've straight up narrated it that he's definitely at least 60 times the speed of sound. We've seen him actually outrunning heat vision. A case like this, they narrate he's moving at half the speed of light. So there you go. Even while young, Wally's able to stop a twister by moving at half the speed of light. I bet you all are tired of me saying the word light in this video. Stated, running so close to light, speed, narration, not the characters, but the narrator. In case like this, running faster than the speed of light, because they literally stated, light is having trouble keeping up. He's always been faster than the speed of light because even as a kid, he can run around the earth seven times in the same second. Faster than the fastest car, faster than the fastest aircraft, faster than freaking radio waves, which are the speed of light, breaking light speed, zipping. These guys are booking, going too fast for our comprehension. This is how they talk about speed, relativistic speed, space, time, light. It all runs together and becomes one beyond the super luminal barrier. Yeah, it gets crazy. You guys know how black holes are something in the universe that has such great suction that is something not even light can escape and light doesn't even have mass. So imagine how hard it will pull you if you actually have mass. They let you know that they even go by real science in the comment because they even say gravitational field around a black hole is so intense even light gets swallowed up. But So he has to go past the speed of light so they're even implying that it, their black hole acts like a black hole that we know in science in real life or whatever. Wally can travel faster than the speed of light. When you Google what are photons, a particle representing a quantum of light. Other speeds that like characters like Jay even said he was having a hard time tracking Wally because light's still catching up. Can leave photons standing still. You guys already know speed, time travel. When it comes to speed force users like Wally, they go hand in hand like I mentioned earlier because he ran to the end of time where the concept of death itself doesn't exist no more. So he raced death to the end of time to take care of him that way. Epic use of your time travel ability. You guys knew this was coming. Newer comics, older comics, it doesn't matter which continuity we're talking about. Wally West is always at the top of the food chain, meaning whatever beings like this can do in speed, whatever Wonder Woman can do in speed, Flash, Wally West can outspeed them. This should be obvious at this point, but let me go over it again real quick. Notice how on this list, there's not a single Green Lantern and Green Lanterns are ridiculously fast as well. I mean, Green Lanterns are not even like considered speedsters one per se. I mean, they're still fast, massively faster than the speed of light. And for the most part, they're not even considered faster than Superman for the most part. And they can travel light years. Wonder Woman has fighting speed and travel speed. She's able to use her fighting speed to block all these. This is an example of travel speed mixing in with her combat speed. She's literally traveling from this point to this point to this point to this point to block all around it. So it's travel speed on top of the fighting speed. And then she's moving her arms at ridiculous speed and Flash is faster than her. I mean, they had like a little fun race, but it should be noted that she does have a speedster God's blessing. So one can say Wonder Woman is a speedster too, but whatever she can do in speed, he can do better. He's even trolling her said, I'm sorry, I thought you were fast. I mean, he's already fast, but we're not even going to talk about when he actually has stuff that helps amp him to go faster than light squared. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's casually outrunning universe explosions. Talking about shooting my eyes from the lights of the Big Bang, Big Bang explosion, God of speed. One can say universe collapsing because they say implode. Okay, it's one thing to have the kind of speed to be able to move fast in a straight line. 
Because in a straight line, we know for a fact he can move far faster than the speed of light. Just going in a straight line, right? We know that, right? How's his reflexes with his speed? Like, can he use his speed in combat to zip around and confuse his opponent? The Flash is one of those few characters where his running speed and combat speed go hand in hand. Because as he runs, everything slows down so he doesn't run into stuff. Because quite simply, if he didn't have the reflexes while he was running at these top speeds, he would just run into every building. But he has the reflexes to dodge out of the way of buildings as he's moving that implies fighting speed or combat speed his perception slows down it's not really my opinion because they literally said it on panel that the speed force revs up his reflexes so he has to have combat speed i mean it's literally stated he can speed up his thought process thinking his cerebral cortex is working at a hundred thousand times his normal speed in everything speed related he just has crazy combat speed he's one of those characters that have different perception mode normal mode and speed mode can you imagine being in speed mode all the time like his perception actually speeds up and slows stuff down to where time is like frozen duh he talks about the struggles talking about catching a lightning in your hand sometimes spend a month between the ticks of a second his reflexes kick in when he's even in danger everything is slowed down to the point where something was piercing his neck and his body automatically started freezing to show his fighting speed Clears all this crap out just like that. Like in this occasion with ninjas, speed mode turned on automatically. Especially one could say it's like a spider sense. <laughs> it's like your body goes on defense mode when it knows you're in danger. I guess this is significantly more amplified when you're a flash level being. When a machine's in the process of messing up, he can put them all back together where they're supposed to be before any of them hit the floor, instantly repairing it. He's one of the few people that can notice small intricacies nobody else will notice, like nanosecond gaps, something that would be irrelevant to somebody else. He notices the small flickers when his perception is reignited he can see light itself twist and turn and it, not to mention it's literally stated he can punch at light speed he looked through a crowd and his mind and brain speed processing power can process all these different faces that he's looking at in a picosecond even in newer comics nothing changes heck he's even faster here he can perceive picoseconds a picosecond is one trillionth of a second he can blitz beams and deactivate your gun in a picosecond like you're pretty much standing still he can do breaking physics type stuff like outrunning his own shadow he can throw rocks at light speed or near the speed of light other speedsters can work together and huddle up in nanoseconds to come up with a strategy one billionth of a second is a nanosecond by the way and can contain a blast in one billionth of a second with speed in this particular occasion he uses his speed in combat to punch a beam with the speed of light Running around the area, zipping across the place, taking sharp turns, disarming bombs, a lot of mumbo jumbo, while even characters like Superman are frozen, and he's moving past them, he still hasn't landed. All this, Batman's even frozen, somebody we know that can react to bullets, Green Lanterns are even frozen, he's just that freaking fast i think we all can agree that light speed is a pun it's an oversimplification that's their way of saying that's their bare minimum speed they're not going to actually say the actual numbers of what they're actually going because some of these comments there's no way they were just light speed on the dot like this example they say that he was a breath short of light speed but that literally wouldn't make sense with math there was a nuclear warhead that exploded Five hundred thousand men and children and etc this city has survived in a number of wars and will not survive this. In microseconds, half a million Koreans seem to be materialized 35 miles away from the blast. I don't think y'all realize how wild this is. Because it's not like he's a Green Lantern or something. The Flash, or if he was the Green Lantern, the Green Lantern would just do something like this and just literally put a bubble around all these people. And then just move all these people over here with one, probably one move. But you got to remember, this is Flash we're talking about. In this particular comic, it was stated, one person at a time, sometimes two people were carried at once. So he had to slide all these people, one by one or two at a time, to get all these people to safety. There's literally no way this is a breath's hair under light speed. Okay, that's one person. Now I got to go back. That's a one person. Got to go back again. That's one person. That's got to go back to two people. Got to go back two people got to go back two people got to do this over and over again to get all 500,000 people to safety keep in mind he had to do this in thousands of a second because there was a nuclear explosion going off and he had to get these people out of there fast one by one this is like an old feat and a lot of people have calculated this to be at least trillions of times the speed of light dc has a lot of speed-ish type beings no matter which era wally west and barry are always above superman level beings when it comes to speed same with wonder woman even though they're ridiculously fast even if you don't want to take this chart seriously the feats itself speak for themselves like i mentioned in the very beginning of the video there was a point where superman was kind of close to wally before he got better with his speed later on in comics and improving like this is one of them earlier times and then you got occasions like this 
where he's chasing after Wally. And it was literally stated right here. There was a time he used used to be evenly matched, but that has changed since he's gotten better with his speed force abilities. And his heat vision can't even catch up with him. And then Superman races beings like Barry who are not even faster than Wally. And you guessed it, Barry's speed was able to leave him in the dust saying, I've won a couple of those races. Those were for charity. Flash just Barry and Wally are both faster than soup. I mean, if Superman gets dusted by Barry, even in newer continuity stuff where Wally's faster, by the way, it's even confirmed that Barry admitted the guy that he used to chill with, Kid Flash, has become faster than him because he even said, you're the fastest man alive. Barry saying that to Wally. In this occasion, it stated if Wally really wanted to run away, Barry wouldn't be able to catch him in speed. Then you have occasions like this where Wally West and Barry are running fast. And just in their base states, Superman can't even freaking keep up. For those Superman Tars out there to try to say he's fast, he literally said they're going too fast. Just couldn't catch them. Even in Rebirth, we've seen him outspeed Superman, so that this is a no-brainer. Barry Allen said, Wally, I can't keep up with you. Part of the reason why he's so fast is because he understands the speed force on a spiritual level. Extremely powerful beings that are not speedsters per se, but are still extremely fast. New guys like Darkseid, if we assume that Flash is faster than him when it comes to a raw travel speed from point A to point B, that would be absurd because him and Highfather just casually took a fly to the edge of the universe, moving at an unthinkable speed to an unimaginable destination. These two just said, ready, said, go, and just they just raced to the edge of the universe, to this place known as the Source. Like, this is just ridiculous. And the funny part is, this guy Darkseid is not the speedster, and he's not even the fastest of the new gods. And you guys know how when it comes to the speed of light, you can circle the Earth seven times in a second going at the speed of light, right? A being that's faster than Darkseid, the fastest of the new gods, can speed safely away from the Omega Beams, He's fast enough to circle the entire planet of Apocalypse with a raw speed alone, circled it thousands of times, heavily implying massively faster than the speed of light speeds. We don't know the exact time frame, but this is still absurd. And Wally West is apparently faster than Dark Side and Light Ray. And if you still think all this is BS about him being faster than Dark Side and Light Ray when it comes to just raw speed, it was literally stated by a deity that Wally West, this main continuity version of Wally West, is actually the fastest in the multiverse. Because it's true that DC likes to reboot itself, but in newer stuff, he's actually, narratively speaking, faster than he used to be even in his old days, when even in his old days he was the fastest. Yeah, in Rebirth comics, he has a new costume. His costume is epic, by the way. But it's crazy that in Rebirth continuity, he's actually confirmed to be faster than ever before, even in from post-crisis days. I mean, for Pete's sake, in Rebirth, he has one of the greatest feats of all time when it comes to speed. Just simply getting mad. He was able to achieve a ridiculous level of speed in this particular occasion. Faster than light, faster than thought, faster than the speed force itself. Like, what? The speed force is all-encompassing around the whole DC universe. The fastest in the multiverse. And for all you lowballers out there saying, oh, the only reason he was able to run faster than the speed force is because he was amp. No, it's confirmed it was all his power. So that was not actually a temporary power for amp in that particular occasion. I don't think you guys understand the gravity of the situation. There's a whole bunch of other species in the multiverse like him. And he's the fast. He's faster than all those different universes versions of himself or other speedsters in general or faster than beings that are not speedsters. How do you become faster than something that's technically everywhere in the multiverse because the speed force is in this universe, the speed force is in this universe, he's faster than something that's omnipresent? How does one surpass something that's omnipresent when it comes to speed? That's like the ultimate speed. One can say Wally in this achieved speeds above infinite. Like, how does that even work? That's like incalculable. How do you move above speeds faster than infinite? Being a Flash character, there's a lot of times where their speed varies depending on if they're holding back, depending on if they're getting extra kinetic energy from other beings, being amped up from the speed force itself. When Zoom was powered up more than ever before, there was this particular occasion where he got powered up. One can say this is an occasion of Wally achieving infinite speed. Time nearly stops around him. All laws of physics are shattered. Eyes are starting to adjust to meeting the light instead of taking it in. Like, they're not moving so fast time is slowed down. They're completely standing still in time. Even speedsters are completely standing still. They're going so fast, they're in a basically another reality. They're locked in between two ticks of a second in a place where we are immortal. They achieved a speed that was so fast that even beings like Superman are completely frozen, even though they've circled the globe dozens of times. We've covered every inch of the world. I've seen dozens of my fellow heroes, but no one can help. This fight, it's 
only going on for less than a second. A thousand miles with every punch thrown. But yeah, this is like a temporary thing. Just imagine being punched at infinite speed. How would that feel, guys? One can say in a weird way, Speed Force users could technically do the fusion technique because they can either give out a speedster his speed or they can just steal speed from other speedsters or etc. It's kind of like becoming a fusion speedster being when you get speed from other speedsters on top of your already godlike crazy speed. At least this is how I perceive it. Like in this occasion, they pretty much explain it here. Take his speed. Like he just literally amped him up. It's, it's like his powers in one body being amped up by more than one being at the same same time combining their kinetic force going through his veins if you already see my jay garrick impulse videos just knowing having their speed on top of this is crazy so he was basically amped by jay and bart's speed and that still wasn't enough zoom in this particular occasion so that's when he had to get a boost from another in this particular occasion and that's how he got powered up even more to be able to achieve one can say basically infinite speed when he had this heart condition he can kind of freeze time he finds a way to be able to amp himself up without even having to steal energy by reciting the speed force formula stated he here, reciting the speed force formula developed by Johnny Quick, taps into the speed force in a different way, he uses it only as a last resort, he's only used it twice up to this point. The only drawback about him amping himself with the speed force formula is that it puts a lot of extra strain on the speed force, so it's something you've got to use during critical situations. By saying the speed force formula, one can say it puts a lot of strain on the speed force, but he can have everybody within this vicinity, other speedsters, have time freeze around them so they can have time to think of a game plan, so they can have a few minutes of breathing room. So one can say boosting his speed ridiculously. He can punch or kick at the speed of light or in this occasion half the speed of light. There's a modified computer that can handle his thought processing speed. It can scroll at near light speed and he can read and process things in his brain this fast. Even young searching across the globe for different weapons or super weapons. He evacuated these people, then read a whole bunch of construction books so he can learn construction. He was able to process all this so he can rebuild all this BS so it can be better than ever. Imagine reading and memorizing dozens of blueprints, read over 215 books of, on engineering and attain all that knowledge in that short amount of time. Another occasion of him attacking and moving or pushing somebody at 100,000 miles a second. Evacuates all these people while moving at ridiculous levels of speed. Being in two places at once. This is wild to keep his identity secret. He can tell when something's about to explode via the vibrations and do, and do something about it. And be back home in nanoseconds. One billionth of a second, by the way. Sometimes he wakes up and he's already in speed mode. And everything's frozen. And he doesn't know what's going on. It's like it automatically kicks in if danger pops up. And wakes him up so he can give himself time to escape. So it's almost, one can say, it's hard to catch him off guard. Because his reflexes will even kick in if you're about to hurt him. Or in the process of hurting him. Like, even if there's electrified water, he's so fast, he can step on electrified water, and he can step off of it before it has time to electrocute him. Going too fast to be zapped. Of course, he can stop all of these bullets. That's literally slow motion to him. Of course, he can avoid stuff like this. DC is filled with powerhouses that can destroy planets, whether with punches or gear, or they're just straight up muscle strength and stuff of that such. Super strength. Matter of fact, the Justice League's filled with powerhouses that are that strong. Like Wonder Woman can help move the planet. Same with Martian Manhunter and the same with Superman. The thing about the Flash that's different from these other powerhouses is that despite the fact you won't see Flash lifting up super crazy heavy stuff because his strength comes from his speed. So he's not like a lifter. You won't see him moving planets like Superman and such. You know, like occasions like this when you see the powerhouses move the entire planet. None of this lifting stuff really matters because whatever he lacks in the raw strength in that department, when it comes to actually fighting him, thanks to his travel speed and punches speed and the fact that he can use his travel speed in combat to help amp his punches even more, it makes up the gap of whatever strength he might lack physically to lift stuff up with. Like even though his strength isn't his strong suit, he can still do superhuman lifting stuff like lifting stuff up like this. It's just not on the same degree as Wonder Woman in them though. Like holding this dude like this, you can literally see him holding 800 pounds, like in casually running with it to show that it's just... He's definitely stronger than your normal human. And it's little stuff like this nobody pays attention to. Holding somebody with one arm is a lot tougher than you think. Like, you see his physicals here, this dinosaur, you know, he's definitely not normal physically. I mean, we've seen him have the raw punching power to punch up cars, stomp really hard to make like a shockwave to make beings fall over. He can throw rocks so hard and fast it can puncture ships because of the speed he's throwing them rocks at. Can flick bullets at you and knock you out because of how he can flick it. Be careful, while that can go through him. He will use his speed to run to another state, build up momentum, gather it so he can punch you extra hard. 
In this particular occasion with Vandal Savage, narration states that this blow would shatter a buffalo's spine. Him and Gorilla Grodd has gotten in a lot of fights. He can use his speed going faster than the speed of sound in this situation because he doesn't punch at light speed every time because it depends on the situation. He hits Grodd so hard they go flying very far. I mean, look how they go flying here. I think most people respect Martian Manhunter and would agree he's a powerhouse Superman-centric Wonder woman as type character. Well, it's not just him you got to respect. You got to respect the white Martians in general. Matter of fact, white Martians have given powerhouses serious issues in the past. Green Lantern, Superman, Wonder Woman centric beings, even Flash level beings. They can do petty stuff like level mountains. Of course, they can do that. Other powerhouses in DC can do that with ease. They can knock back a new guy like Dark Side Sun, Orion. We know Wonder Woman and them have the strength to move planets. These white Martians are literally restraining Wonder Woman and etc. In this occasion, even making powerful Green Lanterns like Kyle Rayner Sleepy, along with even Superman, breaking Kyle's arm? Lantern beings like Alan Scott and even Superboy look kind of sleepy from the White Martians? Restraining a whole bunch of powerhouse Justice Leaguers for a little while, including a Flash level being? That's Superman, I see Martian Man, or Plastic Man's pretty strong too, watch my video about him, and Wonder Woman. So now you know that White Martians are beasts, Wally West used his speed going at light speed to make build up to punch extra hard to send this White Martian flying he can kick at ridiculous speeds as even narrated on panel that even at moving at half the speed of light he can hit with the mass of a small moon so it's proven that his punches or kicks thanks to how fast he can punch or strike basically feels like a moon falling on you already pretty much proven he can hit with quintillions of tons of force without even having that crazy of lifting power just from raw speed velocity build up momentum and everything put together alternate reality wonder woman had to feel this I mean, when he's skating, just what he's skating on, if he goes at a fast enough speed and shatter all of it with his raw power output. So you got to be careful of these fish charging at you. They could cause moon busting type of force just from him punching you. I briefly mentioned this earlier. He can vibrate stuff to make him explode with his phasing. It shows his attack strength vibrating. This being makes his hand explode. You might as well say he has intangibility like Martian Manhunter. He can just literally reach in your neck and get bombs out of your neck. You're probably thinking, what's the point of all this moon busting stuff if his durability trash? But is his durability trash when he can consciously make it better? He let himself get yanked into a black hole because he knew he could shift his molecules, being able to give them room to breathe and move. Dude can just be at the epicenter of a black hole by increasing his durability. One could say giving himself some form of intangibility. I mean, we're talking about a guy that can make this statue heat up. And beings like Martian Manhunter, he can actually hit because he can vibrate a certain way to where it forces him solid. If he wants to increase his attack strength too, he can make his fist hotter. I already brought this up earlier about how he can punch at light speed, but how does it feel when you get punched at light speed? Theoretically, in real science, when you achieve light speed, your mass becomes infinite. In this particular occasion, they talk about how his fist hits like a white dwarf star. You thought you only had to worry about moon shattering stuff only. We're talking about star shattering or star level force he can hit you with. The speed of which he can punch pretty much makes him a Superman level being. I mean, when you can damage white Martians, beings that give Kryptonians or even powerhouses of the Just League issues, that sh that concretes you as a powerhouse yourself. I mean, he's always fighting beings that's similar to him and they cause this much environmental destruction. I mean, what evidence do you need other than the fact that he be fighting beings that be giving Superman issues like Mongo, showing that his speed is weight and it is power? Because when we see him pull up on Mongo, when he does hit him, notice how he doesn't just get splattered. He even said that's the kind of shot that would have turned his jaw to breakfast cereal before the speed force revived up my reflexes. Fighting a Superman century type character and even his punches, his attacks, and him even making vortexes seem to damage him to the point he got the upper hand over Mongo. Keep in mind, for his punches to affect beings that in the older comics or lore, powerhouses like Wonder Woman would punch beings like Mongo and hurt themselves punching him. In the past past, Mongo's even took an assault from Superman, who's fighting him pretty freaking hard. And he's still able to counter Superman. So even if you try to say those comics don't count because they're they're too old. Well, even in post-crisis era, Mongo has been seen battling Kyle Rayner and post-crisis Superman in a slugfest. So for Wally West to get advantage over beings this powerful, beings that are literally locking arms with Superman this much, they're locking muscles. And Wally West got the advantage over being like this. Even crumbling up Green Lantern constructs and punches from Superman, he still continues to fight. They do end up getting the win, but the fact they had to do all this work just to put this guy down and Wally one-on-one -on -one this being is impressive, meaning he's got to be up there with them too. 
I brought up him being able to speak still earlier, but it's kind of broken what he can do if he really felt like it. He stated he could literally steal all of Superman's kinetic energy and stop him cold, but it'd be like throwing him out of a car and one moving at over 2,000 miles a second. Due to his durability, he would create destruction, which is why it wouldn't be smart for him to do that. He's a speed vampire. Stole all your speed. He can even steal the speed of beings that are super powerful android robot things like Amazo. One could say he can amp himself up with other people's kinetic energy. Well, he can tell others to start running. Like They literally said, in a fraction of a second, so infinitesimal, no word exists to describe it. I'm leaving the recognized space-time continuum and approaching trans-time velocity. Like, what the heck is that? He was racing against teleportation, guys. But yeah, this in this particular case, this is considered outside help. Getting help from some of the fastest beings alive, even humans, to prove he can outspeed teleportation. It's literally described as him chasing an electrical representation of his own voice across the fourth dimension and back into the third and the future of the entire planet is at risk. It's crazy that this being teleported here. It's even stated by the time the Titan reaches Earth, he's already zigzagged around Jay Garrick and Superman more than a million times. Even going as far as saying, what kept you, big fella? Outspeeding teleportation. You remember this feat, this famous feat I brought up earlier of the powerhouses moving planets and stuff? Have you ever wondered who's helping in this situation? All this stress that they're putting on the Earth, Wally is helping absorb all of this mess. That gives you an idea of how much kinetic energy Wally West can absorb too. He even said it's like absorbing the kinetic energy of a bullet, only bigger. To prove his power even more, one of his arch nemesis is another speech to level being like Zoom, for example, was fighting a powerhouse like Wonder Woman. And in her opinion, somebody that knows Superman's strength really well, she's compared his punches to Superman before. And they said it hurts more being punched at the speed of light thanks to Zoom and speedsters. And this is Wally's arch nemesis. Statements like this do not seem to be an exaggeration considering you see occasions like this of him punching Superman. So it's pretty confirmed that he's pretty much up there with the big dogs. Confirming he can punch with Superman-like force. As you can see in this occasion, him fighting Zoom. More proof that he can bust planets is the fact that when Green Lantern tears try to stop him from running, he's powerful enough to just bulldozer through it, him and Barry. Punching through constructs from Green Lanterns, even in the Rebirth era, is insane can shield from blasts from actual planets themselves and he can shield from it so wally and barry punching through his construct is no easy feat because he's been hit by stuff that bust up the moon cut it in half this occasion with zod even though zod was under two suns how jordan not only can fight kryptonian level being but actually get a legit victory and it can create gigantic planet-sized shields to shield from multiple kryptonians for a little while. So Green Lantern Tears in DC Rebirth era, whether it be blasting or shielding, can endure and blast with a lot of power. Whether it be getting blasted by an actual planet, arresting Kryptonian Tears like Zod, being literally called a green supernova, and has been hit by stuff that would cut the moon in half. Regardless of all this mess, Wally and Barry can just slam and blast through Green Lantern shields with their raw power output. Thanks to how hard they can hit and thanks to their momentum and stuff. Pretty much proving that Wally's punches are like a supernova explosion or greater. His strikes can damage powerhouses like alternate possible future history versions of Donna Troy, Wonder Woman legacy type character. He's not afraid of blitzing still. There's this occasion, this vampire Superman centric looking character, Ultraman of this dimension. He can kind of affect Superman level beings with his punches here, just casually. Got the advantage by using wood because that's one of his weaknesses because he's a vampire in this universe. Mr. Terrific, an extremely smart being that I have a video about on the channel, check out that video about him, says, due to Wally's special connection to the Speed Force, he's too strong of a being to exist. Maybe more powerful than Superman. They even talk about it even more. It's not that you're fast, you defy physics. Inside of you is incalculable, infinite. He even says you have a 65% chance of destroying the world some at some point. This dude got an encounter with the Justice League Dark. I'm talking about Etrigan, Dr. Fate, Zatanna, Constantine, Magic users. And he got to do some team busting, fighting multiple of them type of stuff. And you know Zatanna's a powerhouse, covered her mouth, blitzed her. It's a case like this where he's using his speed in an epic fashion, hitting Etrigan. Being the godlike speedster he is, he can actually threaten the multiverse if he lets his powers go too haywire. You know, the speed force covers the whole multiverse outside of space and time. Speed force wall is. And Wally, along with Barry, when they build up too much speed, they can mess up the speed first barrier wall that start messing up the multiverse. Like, imagine what this punch would feel like when they're going this haywire. The shattered speed force barrier. These two was doing all this damage. Literally stated by Cyborg, the 
scientific guy right right here the energy they're in generating is playing havoc with the fabric of the multiverse yeah speed force users are basically powerhouses if they can threaten the universe or multiverse with their energy output like even though they was connected to the speed force something was severely wrong i think we broke the speed force you didn't break the speed force you broke the force barrier and for those that don't believe their havoc they was wreaking with their speed was messing up stuff in the multiverse it was literally confirmed like people was feeling it across the earth messing up the magical stuff in the multiverse it was messing up stuff in the microverse people that exist outside space and time like high father can sense what's going on all this adds up because they said the speed force is literally an infinite energy the entirety of central city was frozen in this particular occasion but thanks to them being speed force users they was able to kind of counter it to where speedsters will not be frozen like the rest of central city like you can literally see everybody's frozen Let's talk about his temporary power up. There's a lot of ways to become dang near close to omnipotent in comic books, Marvel, DC, like this artifact. There's crazy strong devices in DC comics like this chair, for example. The Mobius chair does extract a heavy price. It will overwhelm all your senses, both heart and mind with pure knowledge. Any capacity for emotion, passion, love, human connection will elude you forever. It, it has some stakes. Every part of your mind will be filled with information. The Mobius chair has acquired until now with infinitely more to come. There will be no secrets from you. So he gets a ridiculously godlike power by sitting in the Mobius chair, overloading his senses like they said it would. Becomes the Mobius chair, doesn't even claim being Wally right here. We were the Mobius chair, we were Wally, now we are something new. When you thought he was overtaken, he says his name again like he, yeah, his name is Wally West. Stated to possess the vast knowledge of the multiverse, has the power of a god within him. There's no secrets, he sees every single crisis from first and the last, all the crises, even before the retcons and stuff, he's seeing it. The Christ on Infinite Earths with the Antimonitor Spectre, Parallax, Hal Jordan, that version, New 52 era. Wally was apparently in a powered up state such on a cosmic status. Godlike being asked him, do you think you can repair the damage of the multiverse? Explains the entire multiverse exists in a delicate and infinite balance. Are you proposing to mend all of reality? He literally says, I have the power and knowledge to fix everything in the reality, multiversal stuff. The slightest consequences can make a catastrophic dark multiverse reaction in ways we cannot predict. He said, I need you to hold the line, Tempest, right quick to keep them out of my way for what I'm about to do. When he asked, can you fix the damage to the multiverse? Wally said, so yeah, I got this. <laughs> yeah, he's that powerful. Like, it's not an exaggeration. He's literally about to affect different timelines, different versions of the characters, all this stuff he's about to affect. Batman Beyond, prehistoric stuff. Supergirl dying in that, you know, remember that story. Post-Crisis Batman pose, you remember that pose. New 52 characters fighting Darkseid, you remember that. Alternate reality Superman here, one here, another one here, post-crisis, remember that post-crisis pose, Supergirl died, you know, this stuff is the stuff we've seen before in the past DC history, they're trying to give you a scope on what's actually about to happen, all he needs to do is concentrate, going from moment from moment, all of this madness, only reason he couldn't do as he wished as he pleased was because of the overpowered Dark Knight who laughs, cosmic being, being that had the power of Dr. Manhattan, stopping him. Someone's changing the multiverse, corrupting it. The Batman who laughs. He can see all the problems with reality, how time and space and everything is broken and needs to be fixed. It all risks collapse. It's even stated that while in the Mobius chair, he had the power to make repairs to the timeline and stuff. Matter of fact, it's so powerful when even cosmic beings like the Batman who laughs tried to sit on it. It rejects him. He had all this power at his disposal, the chair. So even when he's not in the chair, he still has his super speed and still seems to be powered up. I love how flashes just casually talk about how they can dimension hop. But in this particular occasion, they could. Under normal circumstances, it's implied they can just run to another dimension, another point in time. He even said he tried that other species other than Wally. But the Darkest Knight is not letting him do that. Wally is powered by anti-crisis energy. Knowing the speed force formula or speed force stuff while having these type of anti-crisis energies is ridiculous. While he's like this, he can sense beings putting pressure on the speed force, finding cracks, corrupting it, blitzing through all this horde of flashes, flash team up working together, blitzing these creatures with his power, can still do speed force stuff by being powered up like this. He's definitely peak power when he's in on the chair, does the classic changing outfit thing and trolls the Batman who laughs. But of course, you know, thanks to trickery, the darkest night ended up getting the power from Wally. Of course, they can't keep Wally this powered up. You see how he looks like normal again because he rigged the Morbius chair to direct all the power to him. When he got back on the seat, doing so depowered him. 
so he can remake the universe in his own image. This pretty much proved that the Mobius chair power could remake the universe in his own image if he wanted to. But like I said, he doesn't need these powers to be a threat to multiple universes anyway. If he just messes with the speed force too much, he can mess up the barriers and stuff. But what do you guys think about Wiley West? Do you think he's ridiculously strong? When you can punch at that kind of speed, he's definitely strong. He's definitely a Superman central being that can punch you like this fast. To the point where if you don't have some sort of super speed, you're pretty much done for. Even though there's occasions like this when you fight Superman doppelgangers or lookalikes like Ultraman, basically an alternate reality version of Superman, but a vampire in this particular situation. In cases like this, he does give Superman props and does respect his power, but I still believe he's in that same league. Because he can punch you so many times to where it seems like only one punch and all that energy can be collecting up. Like hitting you hundreds of thousands of times before you can react. Beings that have super speed can't even react when he hits you hundreds of thousands of times in his base form but before i get going everybody do you respect him he's a being with so much power he can cause damage to multiple stars or even the entire universe himself with the amount of power he can produce but before i get going gotta say quick thanks to the donations everybody helps out a lot respect wally west i'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other house strong videos if you like what this channel is offering make sure you hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys later